this demo, um, I will provision an API gateway and um, uh, create a few APIs, demo a few APIs and how you can um, um, protect them with the API gateway. So first things first, <laughs> We need a virtual cloud network. Um, I mentioned that the API gateway is a network attached device. So from the OCI console, I'm going to create a virtual cloud network. I need to select a compartment where I, I will be taking my resources. This is my compartment. Now I already have a VCN created, but I will create a new one just to show you how to do it. Um, I'll be using the VCN wizard. VCN with internet connectivity. And I will just name it to webinar VCN2 and leave all the default settings. This will be very quick. And it is done. Okay. So now that I have my VCN, um, I can create my gateway. The API gateway, uh, you can find it from the menu under developer services, API management and gateways. And you can pin it as a shortcut. Okay, now again, I'm going to create a gateway here to show you the options. So we have webinar uh, gateway too. Now, the first option that you can choose is the type, whether you want this to be a public or a private gateway. If it's public, it will have a, a public IP and you can access it from the internet. For demo purpose, I will keep it as public. Now, I will select uh, the virtual cloud network. I will use my VCN2 and a subnet. And since I want this to be a public uh, gateway, I will select a public subnet from my VCN. Now, I mentioned that the gateway supports custom domain names. Uh, if you want to do so, you can select from here, custom DNS, and you will need to attach uh, your certificate and click on create. So let's have a look at the gateway. So my gateway is public, has a public IP address and a host name. So this is the network attached device. Next, I can begin creating my deployments. The deployments will be the base URLs of my APIs. I will create a deployment. When you create a deployment, you have two options. You can create it from scratch or you can use um, a deployment specification in JSON format. But for demo purpose, I will be doing it from scratch. So basic information, provide a name for your deployment. I will call it then API, a path prefix. I would call it the demo API and the 1.0 version. I can um, already add policies. So I can add policies for authentication, cross origin resource support, rate limiting. Um, I have the logging policies. By default, the log level is set to information. You could change it to lower uh, level. So for now, um, I will not be adding any policies here. So click next and I will define my route. So my route is houses. I will select the method. These are the HTTP uh, methods. I will choose get and my backend. In this case, I'm going to use an HTTP backend and I will provide uh, the URL. So this is a public REST API that I'm using for demo purpose. I have um, an option now to add policies for request, for response, for response caching, and for logging. Let's have a look at some of the policies available. So I could do validations. This is checking that a certain uh, header or query parameter exists in my requests. I can do body validation to validate that uh, uh, the body is a specific content type. Um, I can do transformation to uh, add, remove, uh, or modify headers and query parameters. On the response uh, header transformations, again, to add, remove, or change uh, headers. I can enable response caching, and I can change the logging for this route. 
for now uh, I'll just leave everything as is and I will add one more route and I'll be using here a context variable host ID get again HTTP and as for the backend URL, here is my backend URL. So what I'm trying to do with this is to retrieve a specific house, a house with a specific ID, which I pass as a template or path variable. This is a context variable in API Gateway, and I can use this to uh, build my backend path a bit more in a bit more dynamic manner. So I can access uh, these context variables using request.path. If my variable is part of the path, I could use request.query if I want to take that value from uh, the query parameters, uh, or I can use headers as well. I will leave all as default with me uh, for now. Click on next and create my deployment. Now let's get um, ready to test it. So uh, in order to test it, I need the endpoint. This is my endpoint here. I'm going to use Postman. Take Postman here. Okay. What I want to do in Postman, I want to invoke this deployment. I'm going to copy my deployment URL. And remember that I created uh, two routes. One was houses, the other one was houses slash house ID. So I want to try this. Okay, my deployment is ready. So let's see if I get a reply from this. Okay, it appears that something is wrong. Let me tell you what is wrong in this case. I mentioned that the gateway is a network attached device. The network is your first level of protection. So I have my subnet here and my subnet has an attached security list. This is the default security list when you create um, a VCN, uh, at least using the wizard. So my default security list only allows this, uh, these three rules. So it only allows uh, TCP traffic on port 22, which is SSH. For my gateway, I need 443 for HTTPS access. So what I'm going to do in order to make this work, I am going to create a security list for my API gateway. I'll call it API gateway security list. And I will add an ingress rule with destination port 243 for HTTP access. Now, to keep it simple, I am going to allow all traffic and create my security list. And I'm going to attach it to my public subnet. This is where my gateway is uh, provisioned. Okay. I add it, and now I'm going to try it again. And it is working. Here I have the houses. As you can see, these are uh, houses from the Song of Ice and Fire saga, Game of Thrones. Okay, let's try also uh, the second method, the house by ID. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to add here my house uh, ID. And I'm going to use 378. So this is a house that I know. And here I have my result. This is house Targaryen. Okay, now the nice thing uh, using Postman is that I can use um, variables and I can also organize my requests and save them into collections. So I will, I actually have a collection that I created here earlier. So I have my houses request and I have an environment here with uh, values that I can use dynamically in my requests. So um, to try this, I want to add now from my gateway, 
I want to uh, use here the actual host name of my gateway. Let's copy this. I will use it in Postman. We modified my URL here. Uh, let's take it. It's easier if I take it from the endpoint of my deployment. So I will change this. Okay. So this is the URL of my API gateway. Okay. And now it's probably easier for, for you to see um, how the URL is built. So you have the URL of the API gateway. And then you have the prefix of your deployment, which is this one, demo API 1.0. And then you have the routes. So I'm going to call this again. And here are my houses. Uh, here is my house by ID. Again, I'm using a nice cons uh, construct from Postman uh, to pass the path variable. Again, this is the house Targaryen. Did the same as before. Okay, uh, let's have a look what else we can do. So I'm going to use the same deployment and add a few more routes in here. So let's edit the deployment. Next, on the routes, I'm going to add another route. I'm going to call to name this as hello. The method is going to be get. And for type, I'm going to choose the second uh, backend type available, which is Oracle Functions. I can expose an Oracle function by using API Gateway. Um, I need to select my function. So my function is actually in another compartment. So, and I'm going to use the hello Python function. Okay. Uh, there's one more thing that I want to do now. I want to add a rate limiting policy. And just for the sake of demo, I will keep it at one request per second to show you what it happens uh, when I hit um, the limits. I'm going to apply the changes. Next. So I have my route next and save changes. Okay, while this is happening, uh, while my deployment is getting updated, you can start to see, to see already some metrics are coming in. And I can see a summary of the number of API requests and responses, bytes sent uh, and received, the latency, uh, which is the total latency of my endpoints, uh, but also the internal latency of the API gateway uh, and the backend latency of my actual backend service. Meanwhile, I'm going to prepare my call to the function. Deployment is uh, ready. Now, first time I do this, it will actually not work. I get a 500 internal server error. That's because I need to do um, a setting in my policies. So for functions to be able, for uh, the gateway to be able to invoke fun functions, uh, I need to give it permissions. And you do this from identity and security, identity policies. I have a policy already created in my compartment to give API gateways access to functions. So what, what you need in here is a statement to uh, which has this format, allow any user to use functions family in a compartment. So this is the compartment where the function is created. In my case, my function is in the Valeria compartment. And I have a condition here, request principal type API gateway. And this is the compartment ID where I have my gateway. And uh, I need this compartment ID. Let's get it in another tab. Compartments. Okay, this is my new compartment. And I need the compartment OCID. I need to add it uh, into a statement in my policy. So I'll add another statement here. Um, copy from before and 
replace the compartment OCID. What this statement is doing, it is allowing API Gateway, located in this compartment, to use functions that are located in the Valeria compartment, in my case. So I'm going to save the changes. Let's see if, meanwhile, my hello is working. I think it will work. The first time uh, when you invoke a function, it takes a bit longer for the function to uh, initiate. And it's working. I got 200 OK. And I also got a response. Hello. Me. 